it's very exciting. Um, we're having a lot of luck bringing in some good executive talent. Um, the technical roadmap is coming along. Yeah. Um, we're recruiting engineers. Um, the interest from customers has been huge. It's yeah. Very exciting. We've got a lot of great press. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. And then, as opposed to the pre-Ink Tank days, and I'm not talking, you know, Ceph Inc., which I know existed for a very brief period of time. But before that. Uh, yeah. But before that, how have things changed? Is it just a question of now uh, you've got some some dollars, or is it fundamentally different? I think they're. A couple of different things that have changed. Um, for a long time, Ceph existed as a research project, for yeah. lack of a better term, um, where we're, there are a few engineers working on it, but there was no um, PR organization, we didn't have any yeah. customers, nobody was using it in production yet. Um, so it's really sort of a research snowworks type of yeah. project. Um, and it's only recently that we've um, been able to um, bring the technology to the point where we can actually use it in production. So yeah. customers are actually interested in running it. Uh, sure. And at the same time, the business is sort of ramping up at the same at the same rate. So that's that's exciting. Um, so it means that we have um, you know when people come and talk to us that are interested in the technology. They can actually deploy it, and we can actually sell them support, and they can use it, which is which is great. Now, from a support perspective, in terms of the engagements that you've had to date, what sort of support requests do you have? Is it as basic as uh, I'd like to use this, or is it more complex as I'm deploying it, but I need to scale it across you know 15,000 machines. Most of our um, customers right now are at the stage of um, needing help setting up a proof of concept, um, doing initial performance tuning, or doing initial training as far as how it works and yeah. how you actually use it effectively. Um, for those that have it in production, um, it's been very easy actually so far. <laughs> it's a matter of helping them when they have problems, um, walking them through yeah. upgrades. They're not trivial, that sort of thing. Okay. Certainly, yeah. So people come to us wanting to use stuff for all sorts of things, and it'll work for many things, but not everything. And so it's a question of making sure that they're actually going to be using it. Sure. Because it's not always intuitive. So what be. is the key use case? So let's say I'm comparing it against something very basic. Let's say EXT4. Mm -hmm. You know, the be all and end all and easy general yeah. purpose operate file yeah, system. Yeah, it, it's not a replacement for X4. In fact, we would run on top of X4. Sure. Because it's a it's a clustered distributed sure. system, right? Um, most customers who are using it today um, are using it for their private or public cloud deployments. Um, that's sort of the, the current use case that's well supported and well tested and sure. production ready. Um, so that's both um, storing virtual disks, block devices for virtual machine hosting. Yeah. And that's shared and replicated and reliable, all that stuff. Um, and also for using the Rados Gateway component, which is a RESTful um, interface that gives you S3 and Swift, S3 and Swift compatible object storage. Is that? Rado is also with the RBD block driver, I think, right? Same yeah, thing. Yeah, so Rados is the underlying yeah. object store that sort of everything is built on top of. That's what okay. handles the scaling and the, yeah. the replication and the reliability. And then there are a variety of services built on top of that. So one's the RESTful gateway, sure. one's the block device. There's also a POSIX file system that isn't quite ready for, for prime time yet, but it's also very exciting. Most everybody who's talking to us has also looked at um, Cluster. Yeah. Um, certainly that comes up. Um, many of them have looked at Luster. Um, Really? Many have used, it depends. It depends on the use case. So in the HPC so, world, So certainly. somebody uses Luster other than the Department of Energy? Or are you sure. pitching the Department of Energy? Yeah. There, there are a few, yeah. Really? Not, okay. Not as many. Um, yeah, there's so HDFS and Hadoop. Yeah. Um, certainly that's a common a common story. What's your personal goal in the project? Is it is it for Ceph to be the most performant, the most uh, uh, latency non-sensitive, mm -hmm. or is there some other key thing that you say, hey, look, this is what it is, or is it just a combination of a whole bunch of things that make it easy to use? The, at the top of the list is scalability, yeah. because that's really where um, you find that other systems simply don't exist that are able to handle that. Um, then there's reliability and performance, yeah. sort of come hand in hand. Um, and in, in those situations, we always favor consistency and you know correct operation over taking shortcuts to make things go faster. Um, but it's, it's always a challenge because in the end, what customers want to see is a really big number for their when they do their benchmark or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you have to remind them that you know you're getting everything else as well. So you have yeah. to make sure you don't become focused on the performance and sacrifice the scalability. Or the yeah. Reliability yeah. Exactly. At the same time. Uh, good. Uh, that makes sense. Um, and then in terms of the open source project itself. Mm -hmm. um, now that you've got you know the, the money from Ink Space, etc., Ink Tank, and, and you're and you're putting things in, um, how are you managing the project uh, and making sure that you know the open source is separate from whatever commercial activities you are? Is there some kind of 
magic firewall or is it all open source and then just everything is services and support on top? Um, well, I should, um, I should mention that the open source project is deliberately um, distributed copyright. It's not actually, the code isn't actually owned by Intank. We just happen to hire, happen to have all, most of the developers working for us. Um, so obviously we have a lot of influence over the roadmap. Um, but our goal is to build a vibrant developer community that is yeah. not just funded by us because we want ultimately for Seth to succeed and become ubiquitous in the marketplace. Um, and then, you know, Inktank will compete um, against everyone else on the basis of offering the best support and the best professional services and actually be good at what it does. Could not just be sort of the, the winner by default. Um, and so a lot of uh, what that means for us is making sure that our internal development processes are as open as possible. So we encourage all our developers, even when they're in the same room, to interact over the list. Over IRC, um, we try to share our roadmap discussions as much as possible on the list, and it's an ongoing process to make that happen because it's very hard to just not talk to the person that's in the next room um, and involve the people who are far away. But um, as we hire developers, you know they're distributed across across the country, across the globe, yeah. and so that that has helped forces us to use it open. Uh, yeah, because I, I tend to see file system updates uh, in any given kernel, lots of them, uh, for better or for worse. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a, a, a lot of lately. There was a lot of activity with ButterFS, but I haven't seen a whole lot of Ceph stuff in the last maybe two, three kernels. Is that is that something that I might have missed, or is that there's, you've there's, got stuff coming now? There's um, a lot of maintenance going on, but there aren't a lot of new features or anything like that. So it's mostly bug fixes. Um, in the last two cycles, we've had um, several, a lot of fixes in the messaging, the network passing code, okay. and some cleanup that's associated with that. Um, we won't have any new functional functionality until probably the next release. Um, with the RVD layer, so it will support some of the new features. Uh, next release of Ceph, or we're oh, talking three, oh, this next three, six, or the, uh, this will be the one three, I get. Seven, it'll be three, seven, yeah. Already, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So it'll be tough. Uh, and, and what did you say was coming? You said it was some R? One of the new features in RVD is the ability to uh, clone images. So you might have an image that has your base um, Ubuntu 12.04 yeah. install, and you can clone it to new images instantly, make an instant copy and write copy, and then boot your VM without waiting for a bunch of data to move over the network. Um, and that will be, that's supported today in libRBD, which links to KVM directly, but if you want to use the kernel RBD driver, that support isn't in place yet, and so that'll come soon. That seems like a big deal. Um, yes. Just uh, so that it's very clear to me, being a layperson, mm -hmm. what's that going to enable that I can't do today? Because I'm, I'm guessing it it's means, a bunch of things. Yeah, it means um, the main thing it means is that you'll be able to create a new virtual machine in your cloud environment that boots up instantly. You want them to currently most cloud stacks will um, um, instantiate a, an image file on the local disk, and they actually have to download the operating system yeah. image or copy it on the on the local disk. Yeah. Anyway, it's a slow operation, and then the new kernel begins to boot in the virtual machine. Um, this will let it boot it instantly, so there's no there's no delay. Um, it'll also enable some future features like being able to migrate the storage from one Ceph pool storage to another, so it's backed by different storage devices all seamlessly while the VM is still running, but that's sort of... Well, there's got to be a management layer on top of that too, because oh, yeah. if, you're, if you're talking about the different layer, is there a... On the client side, I guess, a manage, I guess there's some kind of hook, so from a management perspective, mm -hmm. I can hook in and... and yeah, for, for RBD, um, you know, there's obviously the CLI. Yeah. Um, then there's a shared library that lets, gives you access to all the management functionality. So, for example, um, OpenStack and CloudStack both link to libRBD, the Python bindings surrounding it at least. Yeah. Um, and they use that to manipulate. Uh, and then in terms of the uh, core project itself, mm -hmm. where are you at in terms of uh, next interesting release cycle and the development roadmap? Um, the, the focus for the last several months, half a year, year <laughs> has been really on um, stabilizing the core, making sure that Rados itself um, is stable and it, it scales well um, to the larger clusters, and then working on the new feature set in RBD and getting the Rados gateway sorted out. But the, um, the file system has been put on hold for some time, simply because we don't have the development resources to focus on all of those things, and because it's built on top of Rados and we need the yeah. lower levels to work before we work on the upper levels. And so there'll be a shift um, in the coming months back to the file system. And that's going to be very exciting. It'll mean, um, um, you know, A, it'll mean a distributed POSIX consistent file system that actually works that you can use instead of NFS or something. Um, it'll also be great for sort of the Hadoop big data world. And you can plug Ceph underneath Hadoop and replace HDFS, um, which is exciting. And there's a lot of opportunities there yeah. to do interesting things. I think the, the biggest challenge for us is um, building out 
the engineering team quickly, uh, finding engineers, uh, development resources, and then figuring out how to bring them on board and up to speed and contributing productively quickly without overwhelming existing developers and so forth. Um, that's that's a big challenge. Um, and I think along with that, there's the sort of corollary of building up the developer community outside of Inktank that is going to be able to contribute to the project. Um, those are those aren't. Those are arts. Uh, looking out a year, two years, give or take, uh, which I know is a ridiculous amount of time in this business. Uh, where do you see Seth in a year? Um, dominating the world? No, I don't know. In, in a year? That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. No, I would like to see... Things, I, things do I happen imagine, quickly. No, no. <laughs> Just kidding. I would expect to see Seth um, underpinning um, a range of public and private cloud deployments. Um, and I would expect to see it... Um, in sort of POC type stages for um, file system deployments as well.